the large number of our unemployed youth, how do we give them the training and the job opportunities to make them productive citizens again? The other one was the removal of male dominance. From uh, I have not succeeded as much as I had hoped um, because I still have a, a cabinet that's dominated by men and that's because I haven't been able to identify a sufficient number of women that meet the, the criteria that we establish and it's because many, we lost many of our, many of our trained people uh, during the many years of war and are still trying to attract them back. So that's an objective that still remains unfulfilled and I'm still working at it. Thank you. Are you, uh, can we have the next question from you? Okay. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Okay, I just want to ask Madam President, uh, with the recent election of the first black president in America, President Obama, he's young, educated. Do you find this to be a very big motivation to African women to contest the higher positions in the government and elsewhere? I surely hope that uh, President Obama's um, leadership of the most powerful nation in the world will inspire all young people, men and women, uh, to be able to, to go for whatever are their professional and political goals. So I see him as inspirational uh, and I think that you will see much more activism on the part of all the young people all over the world as a result of his success. Okay, Ayub, do you have someone else? Any other are questions? We allowed to ask? Yes. Y yes, yes, we have uh, two more. Would you allow us to ask two more questions? Yes, please go ahead. Quick question. Okay, thank you. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Um, I would like to ask His uh, Excellency, She's been referred as an iron lady, but we know the iron lady we used to know was a such has been different from the way she is. The kind of agenda she's pursuing, the uh, in terms of maternal mortality, I know she's really a great advocacy of girls' education. What has really made her different in the way she behaved to the other iron lady we know we knew? Thank you. Uh, let me say that. Um, that Iron Lady comes from my many years of fiscal discipline. And, and I think I retain <laughs> that same characteristic even today. Uh, but in terms of uh, overall national leadership, one has to temper uh, the iron a little bit um, to, to bring in the sensitivity in dealing with the, with the kinds of problems we face uh, uh, with so many young people that have been displaced and neglected over many years and so um, that's why I tried to balance the Iron Lady with the with the um, my Ellen uh, that tries to, to get the right balance between the, the two stances in national endeavor. Okay, I am the last question. I wish to congratulate Madam President for having achieved uh, to that level which many more women would like to reach. I have a question that I want to ask her. As she has become the President, many will perceive that she has overcome the barriers that women face to reach that position of a President. Do you think as a woman President you still face barriers uh, which are not being faced by men presidents. Thank you. Over to you, please. Um, you know, I, I really don't think uh, that I have any particular barrier that I face. That's of any significance. Um, I think I can compete, stand my own, excel. Uh, under, under any conditions, in any circumstance. If there's anything where, and I consider this really trivial, what I always say is, it's not as easy as a woman president to tell, to tell uh, your colleagues when you're out at meeting, oh, come on, let's go and have a beer. 
you know, something like that, you'd be totally out of order. Uh, but I don't consider that serious barriers. I consider that, you know, uh, small issues of, of social constraints. Thank you, Madam President. Um, Tanzania, we'll come back to you for recommendations. We want to take questions right now from each. Come back with recommendations. We have, as I said before, Sierra Leone, and they are online and are, are video streaming. So we'll take a question from Sierra Leone right now. And Madam President, the question from Sierra Leone by email is, since you became president, do you have any regrets? No. I'm enjoying it, and I will continue to do what I'm doing. Thank you, Madam President. We are now going to go to Ambassador Lila Imara in Egypt. Ambassador Imara, at the Susan Mubarak Women's International Peace Movement. Uh, can you come in, please? Is Ambassador Amara there? Okay. While we're waiting to get uh, Egypt online, we'll then go to Sri Lanka to Dr. Nila Ganeskara. Are you there? Yes. yes. Thank you, Madam. Thank you. I would Sarah. like to. Yes, I would like to express our gratitude to Madam President and. Uh, we have to say something because uh, uh, we are very proud to say that uh, uh, Sri Lanka, the first lady prime minister became from Sri Lanka, uh, first yeah. lady prime minister in the world, that is Mrs. Sirimavo yeah. Bandaranaika. We are happy to say that. Yeah. that uh, the other thing I have to say that uh, Sri Lanka, among Sri Lankan women, our literacy rate is very high. Our education levels and our standards of health are also very high. The thing is that the, we have few issues among uh, political barriers for women in Sri Lanka. Uh, in briefly, I can say that uh, party politics is one of the barriers we are having in Sri Lanka. The second thing is that the poverty, especially in the rural areas and the plantation sector, that is also one of the barriers. And political violence is also uh, coming in front of these uh, issues. And we have a male-dominated society that is also identified barrier. And the, uh, beyond the glass ceiling, we should we are trying to go beyond the glass ceilings for women in the Sri Lanka. Uh, those things are the barriers and the recommendations we have identified this type of things. Increase male participation in all form of women programs. The other thing is the, to build up self-confidence among men and women, not only women, only men and women, and change in attitudes, change in the dependent culture. In Sri Lanka, as many, like many other countries, Asian region, we have a dependent, dependent culture. We have to change that also. And the final thing we propose to implementation of SEDO. We all know that uh, all discrimination of, uh, all form of discrimination on women. We have to implement that also. And finally, I have to say that our younger generation, they have more courage to face for these challenges. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ganesh Uh Are there any questions from Sri Lanka for the President? Yes. Well, Madam President, just one question now. Liberia has a very similar background to us in Sri Lanka where we've had a uh, civil war in part of our country for the last 25 years and you all have a very similar background I think and you have come forward do you have any uh, any advice mm -hmm. for the youth who are coming through this 25 years of terrorism advice for the let youth. me first commence sure let me first commence Sri Lanka for for the very, very important leadership role that uh, your country uh, has played insofar as Wumi has concerned over the years. Uh, I find it strange with that that there's still a male-dominated society, so that means many of the suggestions you made will take them on advisement and see how we can make them <laughs> applicable to our situation. Uh, for the youth, our advice is uh, for youth to, to pursue an education, to pursue training opportunities, 
to become professional and productive citizens because many of them have been denied those kinds of opportunities during the many years of conflict. That's what we try to put emphasis on here and it's a big challenge. I hope we can also benefit from some of your experiences and best practices in this regard. Thank you and uh, for you. Thank you. Uh, we'll now go to uh, Indonesia. Mrs. Siri Danti in Indonesia. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you clearly. In oh, thank you. Um, do you have any questions for Her Excellency? Uh, yes, we have uh, some questions that I collected from the floor. But uh, before that, I would like to share with you uh, some of the issues raised in our discussion. Is that okay? That's fine. Please go right ahead. Okay. Uh, we have identified some of the uh, issues. First is from, uh, uh, I call it internal issues uh, <coughs> faced by women. So women uh, in developing countries like Indonesia is still new in democracy. So uh, we just have our reform uh, era in early 2000. So that is, uh, some of them are still awkward in politics. That's one issue. And then women regard themselves <coughs> as subordinate to that of men. And regard public roles are male's main uh, responsibilities uh, uh, and domain, uh, while women's uh, role is in the private sphere. And then another issue is double burden dichotomy between private and public spheres, and then fear of family breakage and disharmony, especially uh, to women in uh, decision-making position or women in public life. And then uh, there is also another issue is uh, misperception on the meaning of politics. Politics <laughs> is regarded as uh, dirty, uh, dangerous, and male-dominated. And then uh, lack of confidence and assertiveness, lack of knowledge, and lack of communication and networking. And then lack of education and income of women. Some of the issues raised uh, external-wise, among others, are patriarchal culture and society, male domination in politics, lack of male support, misinterpretation of religious norms and teaching, lack of political education to women and media bias and gender bias in media, poverty and gender-based violence. And we also have uh, some recommendations uh, among others that we would like to propose are ensure that affirmative action is implemented by related parties, empower women through various women and community organizations, Strengthening networking with women candidates, political parties, focus on women in politics and parliament, increase campaign on women in politics and gender equality in all decision-making positions, uh, especially as well uh, affirmative action in the executive body. Uh, other recommendations are implementation of gender mainstreaming strategy and CIGO, and then advocate decision makers on gender equality concepts and capacity building to women in politics. Uh, Madam Chairperson and Madam President, uh, from the floor I have collected some uh, questions that we would like to raise to Madam President. There are three uh, important questions that we would like to raise from the floor. One is, uh, what is, what is the from our group as follows. The role of women in supporting women in leadership. Uh, we would like to know uh, whether men also have a role in uh, encouraging and supporting women to enter politics. That is the first question. And then the second one is, uh, can you explain, Madam uh, President, uh, you mentioned about youth parliament. In Indonesia, we don't have youth parliament. Uh, we only have a lot of uh, youth organization. So we would like to know more on its mechanism and how do you recruit uh, youth parliament members and what are their uh, roles in the parliament? Uh, that is the second question. And then the third one is uh, how can women in your country overcome their limitation, especially in entering politics, such as women usually limited in funding, networking and connection? 
um, uh, Indonesia, we are now going to have our general election uh, in 2009, and we have uh, affirmative action also to be implemented. But the problem now that we have the majority of vote uh, system uh, apart from the zipper system. So uh, uh, we think that it will be detrimental to the uh, promoting women representation in the politics. So we would like to know, uh, uh, like you mentioned before in Rwanda, that women uh, uh, have more than 20% in politics. So those are the questions that we would like to raise to Madam President. Thank you very much. Uh, clearly, the role of women in supporting women is crucial. One needs to get beyond the myth uh, that is spread around that women do not support women in politics. My own experience suggests that that is not true. Uh, if a woman has uh, sells her vision and her campaign and, and it's very clear, women will support that and women ought to know that. But still, they're very, very important that women do support, but that's not enough. It's not enough to just have a woman's vote. You need to have vote that comes from all members of the society. So making sure you get, you articulate your vision and your agenda very clearly to all in the society will get you the support of both men and women, and that's very necessary. Uh, our youth parliament stems from um, the promotion of youth uh, by our African Union, our regional institution, and the youths have themselves working with our Ministry of Youth and Sports organized themselves. I, I don't know the details of their workings. I need to know more about it. Uh, but we find every now and then they do meet. They take, they take, um, they, they take position on certain issues. Uh, we have to work a bit more with them. But I will ask the, the coordinator here, because we have many of our youth uh, in this audience with us, and they're listening to this program. Through this kind of networking, I'll ask that uh, they take responsibility to try and feed more information through the colloquial manager to give you uh, much more on that. Uh, limitations in promoting women in politics. Financing is a big issue uh, because we know that uh, politics have been dominated by men over the years and they have supported uh, men in their endeavor. Uh, we have to find a way uh, whether you know women are going to find a way to mobilize resources to support other women or whether countries will adopt you know financing mechanisms that support it uh, by the budget as you have in certain places in developed countries like the United States to make sure that financing does not become an obstacle uh, to any one particular group participating this is what uh, each country will have to to find a way but besides financing the the social barriers, I think that I believe much progress has been made on through policies and through changing attitudes in society. Uh, what, what we all need to promote more women in politics and in leadership position is to, to study those examples around the world and each nation developing some very sound policies applicable to their own situation and circumstance. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, we'll now take another uh, web stream um, question from Sarah Loon. And the question from Sarah Loon is, how cooperative are the men in the Liberian government? They are very cooperative. I mean, we don't look at uh, them as men and women. We look at them as uh, officials or persons or staff or individuals working toward the same uh, development goal. There may be individuals that have you know, their own peculiarities, their own agenda. Uh, but that one is not, is not based upon uh, the difference in gender. I think we all find our people committed toward the same cause. Another question from Sarah Dune is, what was the most important factor that helped you to become president? My many years uh, of activism, uh, in the political arena in the country. I, I wasn't a Johnny come lately. I've been in this for many, many years. I've, I've paid the price. And, and so I think that those many years of experience were the greatest asset. Okay, um, we'll now uh, stay here in the room in Liberia. We have the youth of Liberia here. Like, um, like we had said previously, our audience is composed of youth of Liberia 
who will themselves have one or two questions that we'll take from the youth of Liberia to the president. I'll take one question now from the youth. Yes, please go ahead. Yeah, Madam President, mm -hmm. what legacy have you to pass on in terms of the leadership ability to future generations? The legacy will be that when a, when a woman was in, in the presidency and led Liberia, she made much more strides and did much more for the country than anyone else. That, I hope that will be the legacy that will stand out in terms of the progress we've made in improving the welfare and condition of the average Liberian. Yes. Um, uh, well, hold on. Well, hold on a minute. Uh, we're happy to have you back, Ambassador Imara. Uh, we're happy that Egypt has been able to come back on. Yes, we have two questions for Her Excellency the President. Madam President, thank you. If you, you hear me? Yes, Madam President. Yes, clearly. In view of your, ex, in view of your Excellency's experience, in view of your Excellency's experience and leadership role in the dissemination of United Nations Security Council 1325. And given the fact that a number of African countries are surrounded by conflict situations, what would you recommend as we develop an action plan specifically in the field of education, capacity development, and participation? Question. I would. Shall I put oh. the second question or wait? Can you wait until she answers the first and we can go to the next? Yes, we have uh, I mean, we, we have said that the, the response uh, to being able to meet the requirements of 1325 has to center around education. And that means education at all levels for women, starting with girls, but ensuring that we give higher education to women to prepare them to take leadership role in society. We also say women organizations, many of which have been active in the promotion of peace, need to have much more support policy, uh, in terms of policy measures that will recognize them, finances that will support the programs that they do to, for them to be able to attack things like uh, 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 gender-based violence and whatnot. We think that that's what's going to enable women to really benefit now. Each country has to have a precise program to meet the requirements of 1325. You know, that's just a section of what comes out of the, the Beijing agenda. 1325 and a national program that have specific measures that will enable us to achieve those goals is something that may have been lacking. And we are working on 1325 within the context of uh, Millennium Development Goal 5 on the empowerment of women. And we've just, I think, completed our own national program in this regard. There may be many countries out there like your own that may already have done that, that we might learn from. I hope the colloquium exchange will enable us to know more about some of those uh, better examples and, and best practices that are out there. The Twinning with Ireland. Uh, the Twinning with Ireland. No, the Twinning with Ireland just, is a. Just a minute. Uh, she hasn't finished. The Twinning with Ireland is a welcome initiative which was advanced by uh, former President of Ireland, Mary Robinson. We welcome it. Our two countries are now completing our national plans, and, we want, and there's a harmonization among, among it in which common goals have been set. And so for us, that is an, ex, an exciting development that we very much welcome. And I hope that other countries will form similar twinning arrangements as they propose 1325. Thank you. Uh, Ambassador Amara, uh, we'll hear the next question from you. Yes, the next question. Changing social entrenched attitudes and behaviors is the most challenging endeavor in bridging the gender gap, especially in rural areas. What techniques and methodologies Liberia has adopted to face this challenge. 
you are absolutely right that that is that is a major major issue because we have been conditioned over the years to accept male domination to accept male superiority uh, that is changing in so far as our rural women are concerned we say you start with literacy programs because many of them even though they provide major service like feeding the nation are illiterate we also say education is the key to breaking down these social barriers because education brings equal opportunity education forces social equity because no longer can you keep a trained educated professional woman under under wraps no way can you re suppress a woman of that nature she's going to be active she's going to demand her rights she's going to excel and compete professionally so all things considered for the empowerment of women and the promotion of women in my view education professionalism is the key thank you madam president so um do you have uh, your recommendation yes please yes. go ahead dr imara Please yes, go ahead. The, first the first recommendation would be that the conference should call for the development of a strategic framework on women human security with special focus on social, economic, political security. That would be the first recommendation. The second recommendation is we think that it's recommended that women empowerment be addressed through an integrated approach. That means for economic empowerment through microcredit, for social empowerment through literacy, and legal empowerment through familiarity with legal rights. That would be the second recommendation. The third recommendation would be just to ensure, to have a recommendation ensuring participation of women in political arena. There has to be a special focus on education, information, generate awareness to decrease the intergenerational gap, impact policy, network and share information, enhance a South-South exchange. I think that among our South nations, or African nations, Asian nations, we have lots uh, success stories to share. The third recommendation would be that the conference should give the opportunity for an exchange of experiences and successful best practices in gender ma ma mainstreaming, especially in education. The last recommendation would be to address steps and initiatives that could lead to successful adoption and implementation of affirmative action measures. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Tanzania, uh, could you please come back in and give your recommendations so that we can wrap up with Indonesia? Before, well, guys, before we go on, before, Madam President before, has a response. Before Egypt goes off, let me thank you for those uh, very, very good recommendations. And will you please give Mrs. Mubarak my best regards and tell her I look forward to receiving her in Monrovia uh, in March during the colloquium. Thank you. Uh, Ambassador, I hope you got uh, there. Ambassador, amb uh, one minute, please, Tanzania. Ambassador uh, Imara, I hope you got the message from the president. I hope it was transmitted smoothly. Did yes. you get that message yes. from Madam Mubarak? Yes. Okay. Thank you ever so much. It. Thank you. Thank you. And now Tanzania. Thank you very much, Madam Could you Moderator. Please? And thank Yes, I would, I would like to give recommendations of Tanzania on behalf of the women who are present here. And our first recommendation is uh, to have every nation or every country to have the right uh, policies, as uh, Madam President said, the sound policies, the right laws that will promote women uh, equal participation in our country. 
Our second um, recommendation is for women at national level and even at global level to work together to dismantle the patriarchal system that is responsible of reinforcing the male dominance in the society. And we can be able to dismantle the, the male dominance by promoting the girl-child education and by enhancing training in the country for women to be able to start up their economic activities so that they do away with the poverty, that is also responsible of giving them a lower position in the society. The third recommendation is to work on laws that are oppressive. Over a long time, the customary laws have reinforced the male dominance. In Tanzania, for example, until 1999, the land was only owned by men. But through the amendment of having new land laws, the women of Tanzania can equally own land just like men are owning land. And of course, I would like to join hands with the president that you cannot empower a woman without uh, really emphasizing on education and education, because an educated woman will be qualified to run for a political post to compete on equal basis with men on positions in the government, in the private sector, and everywhere. And also, we should have, uh, we, we, we really should not undermine the quota system. We need to have a, num a good number of women in the parliament to be able to be felt before we talk of the status in the parliament. So the quota system is a transitional means of allowing women to compete on the same basis or on equal basis in the constituency. So let us try to have the, the quota system in place, but as a transitional system, because in Tanzania, we now have 32% um, of parliament members women. Uh, but if we didn't have the quota system, we'd only have 2% of women parliamentarians and who cannot uh, really uh, make a difference in the parliament. And I would like also to, to, to urge the women who, are, who have come to the parliament through the quota system to, 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 to shift or to make progress like we have done. Some of us were, were in the parliament through the quota system, but after two terms, we decided and go to the constituencies to compete with men, and we were able to win. We were not given, uh, we were not given, we were not made members of parliament uh, just like that. We were able to mobilize support from both women and, and men in the constituencies, and we were elected, and in fact, not only marginally, we were elected with many votes. So let us uh, use the quota system as a transition for women to take up uh, positions in competing with men. And I repeat again, I thank the president for emphasizing on education, because I cannot see any way of uh, women occupying the same or equal position in the society without getting educated. Thank you very much. And that was uh, all you. from Tanzania. Over to you, Yvette. Thank you. Um, Bravo, Tanzania women. We'll look at some of your examples on quota. Thank you, Honorable Nagu, uh, also. Uh, we are now going.